A paradigm shift is a radical change of consciousness in light of new information, usually derived from one's inner being surfacing truth. In this state, the mind is lit up, the left and right hemispheres are balanced out and communicating in a more harmonious way than usual. This is a result of heart and mind coherence. Look at the word paradigm. We see right away its similarities with the words pair of dimes. The two dimes can be seen as representing the two hemispheres of the mind. Notice the numeric synchronicity, 10, 10, evenly divided between both sides. What I am getting at is balance. When we find inner balance of mind through living from the heart space, from love, the doorway to the supernatural opens wide. John 10.10 10 states, and this is Jesus speaking, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. When Christ's consciousness awakens within, through an awakening of the third eye, abundance awakens within your life. Abundance of all good things, physical and spiritual. It is the wellspring of it all. We are filled with faith through which all things are possible. What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. We embody the state desired through faith before it is ever manifested. When in alignment, the gateway for an abundance of energy to flow to the child of the left and right hemisphere, the pineal gland, opens wide and floods the center of your consciousness with spiritual fuel. In that state of empowerment, the mythical, the supernatural, becomes commonplace. Faith and belief is increased. All things become possible to him in such a state. Babylon in the Bible is attacked by the mainstream. It is a term now given to corrupt nations. I question this, for Babylon was a group of like-minded people coming together to create something great while the tyrannical god Yahweh gets in the way of human cooperation and causes division, notice what it says concerning the people, that because of their unity, nothing they have set out to do would be impossible. We can look at the Tower of Babylon, where people would dwell as the carnal or physical body in which the spirit resides. The carnal body housing the God essence, when all of our cells when all of our members are unified by the energetic resonance flowing from a heart centered in love, nothing becomes impossible and one is initiated to Godhood. The very name Babylon means gate of the gods. Jesus said, ye are gods. And so the one who destroyed this metaphorical place needs to be called what he is, a tyrant. For in doing so, he demonized the human body the temple of the true God. Babylon is demonized and given as the name of this matrix, this human construct based on greed that subjects people to slavery and hierarchy. Yet Babylon was the center of unity leading to enlightenment. The God who destroyed this place is the one Jesus spoke of saying, the thief comes not but for to steal, kill and destroy. The one seeing through the illusion and walking through the gates of the gods centered in Babylon within one's being, transcends physical limitations and is seated at his rightful throne at the center of consciousness. He begins shifting his reality from a creative stance, that is to say, using inner speech and imagination as tools to create reality, as father, as son, as God spoke the world into existence. So we, as broken and shattered shards of God, must follow in his footsteps if we wish to step into our inherent divinity. You see, God never placed a garden outside of you. You are the tree of life. Your spine and nervous system bears the fruit of life, which nourishes the spirit. DMT flowing from the pineal gland, the fruit of the tree of life, is the spirit's nourishment. According to the story, a united race speaking a single language and migrating eastward 
come to the land of Shinar. There they agree to build a city, and a tower with its top reaching the heavens. Yahweh, observing their city and tower, confounds their speech so they can no longer understand each other, scattering them abroad the world. The Tower of Babel stood at the very heart of the vibrant metropolis of Babylon, in what is today Iraq. We see immediately that this city is inspired from ancient cosmology, the center of the plain where stands Mount Meru, the world axis, where Yggdrasil lays down his roots. And we see that the scattering of Babel is a revision of what happened at the original garden, where the same deity expelled Adam and Eve, telling them to be fruitful, to multiply and fill the earth, after cursing the woman to bear painfully. As he caused our ancestors to leave the motherland, which translates to the heart space, where unity of heart and mind is found. So he goes on to destroy what was a joint effort by humanity, causing division and separation yet once more. These are all allegories. As mankind came from Eden, the center, meaning a singular source, so he would eventually wander about the plain to form all of the cultures we have today. This is the same story of a child being ejected from the mother's womb. Paradise is not an external place. It is an inner state of being of pure love and joy that when one attains, no matter where he finds himself on this plane, an abundant oasis will form around him. This takes root from living in the heart space. Yet there is a presence within the dualistic nature of man which desires division, a presence called evil, and all of its various many vibratory expressions, hate, greed, and so on. These are personified as the devil. Notice the word evil within the name. That is not a coincidence. The devil masquerading himself as an angel of light is disguised with the name Yahweh. Yahweh is the devil. When we vibrate at lower ends, such as hate, envy, lust, and so on, we are of our father, the devil, meaning that we have resonance with that lower vibration, carrying the same energetic imprint equivalent to the pattern of evil in our aura surrounding us. We reverse this curse by living from the heart space, from a space of love and gratitude. We fight not against blood and flesh, but against principalities of the air. This verse is referring to psychological warfare taking place within the mind. Hatred and negativity, chiefly being allegorized as the God of the world, the God of which Jesus said, you are of your father, the devil. And we see that the God of the Bible was always in a bad mood, throwing tantrums, going around stealing, killing, and destroying. The one Jesus spoke of as being his father was not the God of the Old Testament. The devil is nothing outside of you though. It is your own self-induced negativity, causing division and disease within the members of your microcosmic universe, your temple. Again, when reading the Bible, we are reading allegories. When accessing higher states of consciousness from heart and mind unity, grounded in love, faith, and hope, we begin seeing things from our inner and wiser eye. We see through the allegories and exoteric stories that keep the mundane people in bondage. An age of being bound, bound by the physical elements leaving the supernatural field of endless possibilities out of reach. The deeper meaning of allegories is intended for the one centered in the heart space, that pure space of boundless energy, love. Love is the gateway to higher consciousness. So how can we connect with this pure center? Simple, living by the guidelines our ancestors left behind. You might have heard of it, something called the golden rule. Also, one of the best ways I have found is spending time in mother nature, and she will nurture you with more love than you can contain. But enter with a positive mind. The one consistently being nurtured by nature will be at a better disposition than one not. Drink of the generosity of mother earth and be not a plague upon her.